The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patria, joined by my good buddy Keith Cork, here to break down this wonderful Wednesday. Was it 12, then a 9, now a 10 game slate for you guys. So, uh, obviously, we have some things to keep an eye on, some things that uh, we're going to have to monitor, and there is this season. So, tis the season to monitor things. But, Keith, how are you doing over there, brother? Doing all right, man. A little, uh, a little cold, a little chilly, but, uh, you know, I'm huddled up and uh, ready to talk some hoops. So, ready to get down to it. And that's it, man. It's uh, the weather is bad all over the country. Uh, so everybody be safe out there. Wish you guys nothing but the best for you and your families, especially those who uh, are not with the normal means that they might normal ha- have normally have, I guess. Um, so uh, hoop ball, best wishes out there for everybody that is struggling right now. Keith is a legend. Uh, the guy's shivering, but that does not stop him from delivering the DFS content with me this morning. So I appreciate you joining me. But before we jump into anything, quick shout out to our presenting sponsor. Guys, go head over there, uh, run, don't walk to mybookie.ag. Check them out, guys. If you use if you're using any other gambling platforms, any other major bookie sites, uh, you're missing the boat. MyBookie is the absolute best. They're the number one bookie business out there, and the only one I trust uh, with my money. Bottom line, whether you want to do the casino play, which is probably one of my new favorite things, I just get a little action here and there, at least once a week. Uh, where I jump on, they have all my local table games there. Whether you want to play blackjack, I'll uh, play a little roulette. Uh, they have slots, all the table games, poker, uh, you name it. Everything that's in your casino. And on top of that, they got good old, good old sports wagering. So uh, we have the NBA, we have college hoops, we have a lot going on right now. Baseball is right around the corner, so that's coming up. A lot of exciting things. If you head over there and on your initial deposit, you put in the promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L, you will receive a 50% deposit match on your initial deposit. That's up to $1,000. So if you put in a grand, they give you a free $500 to play with, guys. So check them out, mybookie.ag. The promo code is HOOPBALL. All right. We'll jump right into this, my good friend. We have the New York Knicks traveling to Orlando. Take on the Magic. This is a 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. For the injury report, the Knicks. Mitchell Robinson, the only major injury that we need to be concerned with. He had his surgery. Everything went well on his hands. So he's going to be out probably the next four to six weeks minimum. On the Magic, though, a lot more. Uh, Cole Anthony, who we just also got some news on, he's going to be sidelined until at least the All-Star break. Looks like he had a fractured rib as well. Uh, He is ruled out along with Markel Fultz, Aaron Gordon, Jonathan Isaac. Uh, And then we have James Enos, Evan Fournier questionable, Al Farouk Aminu questionable. I believe Fournier and Enos practiced in full on uh, Tuesday. So something to keep an eye on. But we we actually do have, I believe, a game total on this one. Um, I lied. There's there's only one that we have, and I might as well. I mean, I should just say it now, but I'll keep you guys in, in the suspense while you're listening uh, on which game that is. But no game total, no spread. I'll pass it over to you, Keith. Why don't you talk about this Knicks? Yeah, man, uh, the Knicks. Uh, you know, they get a, a nice matchup here against a struggling Magic squad. You know, the Magic aren't playing very well. Um, Derrick Rose is in town now, so uh, you know, when I look at that backcourt over on the Knicks side. I mean, I really, uh, it's really just kind of a mess. I'm not sure who to play. You know, that Derrick Rose, they got Manuel quickly, uh, and then they got Alfred Payton over there. So you know, it's just I, I tend to just stay away from them. So really, the only people I'm looking at on the on the uh, Knicks side is RJ Barrett at 5700. You know, he was in a bit of a slump, but uh, you know he had a good one against the Hawks, which you know obviously when you're when you're a slump of basketball playing the Hawks seems to be the cure for most people, and uh, he did have a very good game, of course, and uh, so I'm looking for him to carry that through, and you know 5700 for a price tag for a guy that you know should get a lot of usage is pretty good. Uh, the other guy I'm looking at is Nerlens Noel, and uh, like you said, Mitch Mitchell Robinson's out. Uh, Nerlens Noel is really the only big guy they have, and I mean he had foul trouble last game. He had three quick fouls, I think, in the first eight minutes he played. And he still managed to put up a pretty decent stat line. So, you know, as long as he can stay on the floor here against the Magic, I mean, he gets a tough matchup in, in Vooch. But uh, if he can stay on the floor, stay out of foul trouble, uh, you know, he puts up the blocks, puts up the steals. That's really where his, um, you know, value comes from. And he's going to get that. Uh, the Magic going to feed Vooch. So he can get those easily. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Noel's probably the one and only guy I really have any real interest in. I don't mind Barrett. Uh, like you said, great price tag for him. He had that bounce back game, could start to put a, a string of good games together. Uh, Thibodeau came out and said that the reason Barrett's minutes have been down as of late is because the second unit has been playing so well. Uh, they do have so many other guards and this, you know, so many guys that they can include in this rotation. Uh, where if the second unit's playing well, they're not going to be shy to keep you know the quickly and Derek Rose combo in there. Uh, nonetheless, if if he's playing well and the game stays close, he's going to probably be looking at close to 35 to 40 minutes like he normally gets. So I don't mind staring at him, but on a 10-game slate, I just don't know if I end up clicking his name at the end of the day. But Noel, I th- you, you touched on it. The foul trouble hurt him last game. This dude should be looking at 30-plus minutes if he stays out of foul trouble, and that's still a great price tag for him. But uh, what about this Orlando team? Are we running it back with any of these guys? Can we pay the 10-1 for Vucevic? I don't think I'm going to personally. I think, you know, like you said, it's a a big slate, 10 games. Um, I don't think we have to go there. Um, it's, I think, the priciest he's been all season, if if not close to it. So, um, yeah, I just don't think we need to go there. It's not a bad play by any means. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't I don't like it against the mix. And uh, they kind of slow the temp down a little bit. So, uh, but, you know, the, the Magic are struggling. And uh, they don't have Cole Anthony. Like you said, Julian really unlucky. He's, he's out for an extended period of time. So, uh, you got to look at the backcourt, and the first place I'd look on the line of Magic would be Michael Carter Williams, MCW. Uh, you know, no, uh, no Markel Fultz, no Cole Anthony. He's going to get all the minutes he can handle, uh, supposedly. I mean, he probably gets 25, 30 minutes in this one. 4,900 is the price tag there, so uh, I really can't beat that uh, for that kind of, that, that amount of minutes. Uh, the only other guy I'd really look at on the Magic side, to be honest, uh, I mean, if, if Fournier plays, you can look at him. I don't know if he does. He's been out for a while. The Magic are, are just struggling right now. I don't know if they are going to play him again if, as they probably look to shop him, uh, I would guess, and maybe even Vooch. Uh, Vooch does have a big contract, but uh, probably shopping those guys right now. But Mo Bamba I'd be looking at, 3,300. Uh, you know, admittedly, it's more of a GPP play, but he got 23 minutes in their last game, and, uh, you know, they're slowly stepping out of the playoffs, so maybe they finally turn to, to developing this guy, and he's got great fantasy per, uh, points per minute, you know, potential. So if he gets the playing time, that's always been the problem. He's never got the playing time, so if he gets it here, uh, I like him at 3,300. Yeah, that'd be a great guy to keep an eye on. You're right. As soon as Obama gets any sort of playing time, uh, we can definitely have some confidence. So uh, I'm with you. Michael Carter Williams, probably my favorite option. And I don't, I saw you looking at Bamba. I'd probably lean, I'm leaning a little bit more towards Birch. Uh, this matchup, they're going to need a little bit more size in that front court going against, you know, the combination of Noel and Julius Randle. If they, you know, run out a Gary Clark, Julius Randle should just be able to bully ball his way in there. I'm not saying they're going to go double big necessarily, but I would expect at least, you know, 24 minutes for Birch at 3,900. That's not a terrible price tag. We saw him and Bamba get elevated minutes in that last one because of the blowout. Uh, so temper expectations. If you're, if you're checking the game logs, I wouldn't expect 34 minutes for Birch again. Uh, but still, very good point per minute guy. And at 3,900, I'd keep him in play for me. We'll move on to the next game. Atlanta Hawks traveling to Boston. Take on the Celtics in this one. Uh, this is another seven. Oh no, I'm sorry, seven thirty Eastern Standard Time game for the Hawks. Boyan Bogdanovich, Chris Dunn, DeAndre Hunter, Rajon Rondo all ruled out. Tony Snell is questionable. The Celtics have yet to release their injury report, and it is because they played today. Uh, no game totals, no spreads. We just talked about this Hawks team. Uh, you know, loving to target them. We got that good R.J. Barrett game against them. We have the Celtics going against them tonight, so we're going to get to them. Uh, but who on this Hawks team could we could we look to actually have some confidence in? I mean, Trey Young is 9,600 at this point. We have some expensive guys we get to. Um, and then Collins and, and Capella, they've, they've been solid, but we haven't necessarily seen those massive games that we've been hoping for lately. But uh, I'll stop talking. I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Keith. Talk <laughs> about this Hawks team. Well, about time. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's a yeah, it's a tricky matchup. You know, the Atlanta Hawks, uh, the Boston Celtics are on a back to back. It's the second game. You know, maybe they're a little tired. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind a Trey Young play here, uh, mainly because if you look at the other side of the ball, you look at Kemba Walker. He's probably going to sit this one's a back to back. You know, he's been sitting out back to backs. I don't know. Maybe he does play. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, if he doesn't, then, you know, Trey Young's not a bad play, but I'm, I'm probably not going to go with him just because there's other options I like better. Uh, but I do like the, Clint, I do like Clint Capella here. I do like John Collins here. I think that, you know, um, when you attack the Celtics, you attack them down low. Um, Capella is not necessarily a scorer. John Collins more so is, and he's, he's also the cheaper guy at 6,900 compared to Capella's 7,500. So I'd probably lean more to, towards JC 
uh, playing him just because he has that scoring ability. And that's probably where they're going to go get their points against the Celtic squad. Um, but the other guy I would look at on, on the Hawks would be Cam Reddish. Um, you know, he had a really good game last one. Finally, I've been saying his name for weeks and he finally came through for me, but you know, it's, it's $4,500 for, uh, for a price tag for a guy that's getting double digit so- shots and uh, probably going to get it again. I don't blame me if you go Dan O'Gallinari here. Um, you know, he's, he may be the, the safer option, but I just, I, I tend to, to lean towards Reddish, uh, as far as the Hawks wings go. All right. No, Hey, listen, uh, we're on the same page front court guys are who I'm looking at. I'm, I'm kind of more on the Capella side of things, uh, just because we know that this front court is also a little bit banged up as bad as they are. If they're without Tice, uh, it's pretty much just going to be Robert Williams and Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson began the second half of a back-to-back after getting his teeth kicked in by Jokic um, all night long. But we'll slide over to the Boston side. I think a lot more people are probably going to have interest in this. You touched on something very important, which is Kemba Walker being on the second half of a back-to-back. Decent chance that he sits this one out. Um, I think it's probably more than likely. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of rule him out. We also have to keep an eye on Daniel Tice with him being questionable. If he sat out today, he could sit out the next game as well. So those two injuries, I mean, we we have to have some interest in these guys. I think everybody in the world was burned by Peyton Pritchard uh, in this last one. But let me ask you, do you have the stones to go back to him? (laughs) Oh, I've always got those stones, my man. I've I've always got those stones. 4,200 for Peyton Pritchard. I'll go there. Uh, right. As long as I know that Kemba Walker's not playing, that's not not a problem with me. I know he had a rough rough outing, and he's he's really he's had some confidence issues that have been kind of public, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a while. But uh, for Peyton Pritchard, but uh, you know he uh, he's due for a nice game, and this is a great spot for him. So forty two hundred for him, I'll go to him. Uh, the other guys I'd be looking at the Celtics side would be Jalen Brown seventy nine hundred. Uh, there was uh, recent news that you know Jason Tatum was talking about how COVID messed up with his conditioning, his ability to breathe, and things like that, and that, that just kind of steers me away, especially from cash games. So uh, Jalen Brown's going to take up take up more of the load. He looks like he's looked like a star. Um, you know, I think he's just going to have a good uh, a good game against a terrible defensive team. And then uh, the last guy I'll, I'll add here is uh, Tristan Thompson. You know, again, like you said, maybe no Tice, hopefully no Tice. And if there isn't, Tristan Thompson seems like a lock to me, 4,100. Uh, he's going to grab some boards. Um, that's a really safe safe value, especially for cash games. Yep. I think, uh, you know, I might as well just let you run solo tonight, man. <laughs> uh, I'm going back to Pritchard if we uh, if we get the news that he will be starting uh, over Kemba or for Kemba. I uh, like Jalen Brown over Tatum. Uh, not necessarily for the same particular reasons. I think they both come with a little, a little bit of, I wouldn't say risk, but, you know, uh, for everything that, you know, Tatum saying, dealing with the post-COVID symptoms and things like that and, and his uh, labored breathing running up and down the court, uh, I think Jalen Brown's been talking about nursing a sore knee, his knee tendonitis. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ainge, uh, Danny Ainge just came out and said that he's concerned about the issue going forward. So they both got a little bit of baggage, but they're both still studs. It's a fantastic matchup. Um, if you wanted to play Tatum, I wouldn't knock you, but I think I'm leaning more towards Jalen. And then I don't mind looking at Thompson if you want the value at 41. Uh, great matchup. Not expecting him to have five fouls as quick as he did uh, tonight. And, uh, again, no Tice would also open up minutes for guys like uh, Robert Williams, especially on the second half of back-to-back. Near minimum salary play. All four of those guys are options for me. I like a lot of Celtics. So we'll keep it moving. Next game, Houston Rockets traveling to Philadelphia. Uh, they're taking on the 76ers here for the Rockets. Dante Exum. Kenya Martin Jr., Kevin Porter Jr., and Ray Spaulding. Christian Wood all ruled out. P.J. Tucker is questionable, while Victor Oladipo, Eric Gordon are both doubtful. On the Sixers side of the ball, Joel Embiid's probable, while Shake Milton, Paul Reed are ruled out. No game total, no spread. Keith, talk about these Rockets, man. Uh, you know, no Gordon, no Oladipo. I think some of the winning lineups the other night had three Rockets in it. Could we go there? Yeah, I mean, you know, the main guy I'd be looking at is Jay Sean Tate. Uh, I think you can definitely go there. I think it's just going to be, like you said, you know, not a, there's a lot of shots to go around and not a lot of people to take them. So uh, Jay Sean Tate is, is absolutely my favorite uh, my favorite target here. You know, I played a whopping 40 minutes last game. There's no reason for that to change, especially if uh, uh, Eric Gordon's going to be out. So um, he's the guy I'm heavily looking at. I don't mind if I, you play other guys, uh, you know, House or... Uh, Sterling Brown, Noaba. Um, these are all guys you can look at. They're all around the same price t- price tag. Uh, Tate happens to be the most expensive of those guys, but I think he's probably the one that has the highest upside uh, to me. But um, you know, I can't knock you for playing any of those guys, to be honest. Yeah, they're all right around that nice middling price range. We're expecting increased roles and minutes for you know Tate, House, Brown, Noaba, all four of them. Uh, 
I, I don't know if I'm going to go chasing that Nawaba game. I think a lot of people might. I don't hate the value still at 4,300, knowing that uh, whether the game stays close or not, you should be looking at at least 28 to 32 minutes. So if you want to check out those guys, I'm cool with it. Uh, you know, Sterling Brown, probably more of the GPP guy, just based on ownership. Still has upside. Game gets out of hand. He plays a little bit more. Uh, but those are the main guys I'm looking at. I don't think I'm going to be investing in Boogie or John Wall on this slate as much. Um, on the Philadelphia side, though, uh, you know, Joel Embiid sat out that last one, that late scratch. It says he's probable now. Uh, do we trust the injury report? <laughs> that's a that's a loaded question. I, I don't know. I, I you know, honestly, uh, this guy got rolled out right right at the end there. Um, it could happen again. But if he plays, I mean, ten eight. It's a lot, a lot of money to spend on this guy, but I do love the spot. I mean, I, you know, even when Boogie was was at his best, he wasn't a great defender. He was more of an offensive player. So, uh, and, and he's he's dealt with the injuries, so he's slower. Um, you know, Embiid's gonna just crush him and eat if he plays. Um, so I think you have to look there. It's just you have to keep an eye on the news, and even if you do keep an eye on the news, you you never know for sure. So that's just the nature of DFS, especially this season. It's been been really crazy. So, um, but I, but I'm I'm okay going there. Uh, and actually, uh, he might be one of my favorite targets. It's just a matter if he plays or not. Um, the other guy I'd be looking at on the on the 76ers side would be Seth Curry at 4,600. It just seems like a great spot for Seth Curry to get things right. He's he's one for nine, I think. Uh, yeah, one for nine in his last couple of games from behind the line. So this is a softball matchup. It's right, just what he needs to get it going. And um, you know, I think he turns it around here. Um, those are the two guys I'm looking at. I mean, I don't mind if you play Ben Simmons or whatever, but. Um, you know, blow up, blow up potential is really there. I think if anyone's going to eat, it's going to be Embiid, uh, as long as he plays, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, listen, I love Ben Simmons in this matchup. If he wasn't coming off the best game of his career, I would love Ben Simmons in this matchup. But we're getting a price hike after that game. Uh, you know, he went from 8,400 now up to 92. A lot of people are going to see that game and want a piece of that ownership. So I honestly don't think I'll end up falling on too many people on the sixer side of the ball. Uh, like you said, there's a little risk with that blowout. I'm, I'm expecting probably um, maybe like a seven to eight point spread on it. So I don't know if it's going to get completely out of hand, but not. Uh, we're paying full price for these guys. And, they're, and a lot of them are coming off their best games. And we have a lot of options. So I don't think I'm going to go here, but I don't fault you. I like your curry call. You're right. This is a great matchup for him. And I expect him to get right soon. Uh, one of the, I believe he was, what was it? 50, 50, 90 is what he was shooting at one point this season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is just unheard of. Uh, only play, I think he it might be one of the only players in history to do so. Um, I, maybe I made that up. I'm not too sure. Could have swore <laughs> I saw that. And nonetheless, we'll go on to the next game. Indiana Pacers traveling to Minnesota, take on the Timberwolves. Uh, this one's going to be a juicy one. We're definitely going to want to watch uh, want some fantasy exposure to this. Uh, not that we have like a game total or spread or anything, but we do have an injury report for the Pacers: Brian Bowen, Karis LeVert, Cassius Stanley. T.J. Warren, all ruled out. Doug McDermott, he's questionable. He missed that last one. Timberwolves did not submit theirs. They played tonight going against the Lakers, so we'll have to wait on theirs. But we'll start with this Pacers team, man. Uh, I'll I'll take the Pacers, and I'll pass it over to you from Minnesota. Uh, T.J. McConnell is just a stud. Uh, this dude just keeps balling out. He keeps doing his thing, his steals, and assists specialist. Uh, but nonetheless, he started in that last one with McDermott sitting. So if he sits again, he'll probably look to draw another start. 5,600, it's not the... The best price tag, it's actually a very, very fair price tag. It's where he should be priced. Uh, but when you're talking about just cash games, and you're just looking for a guy with a nice, stable, secure floor, if he starts, he should be looking at it. He didn't get a lot of assists in that last one. Uh, but we'll probably see Brogdon play a lot more off-ball when TJ McConnell's in the lineup. We see Brogdon's assists dra- dra- drop drastically, and it's just because McConnell, McConnell is a better on-ball player. So I do like some TJ McConnell if he does start. Sabonis at that price tag, I don't mind it. I don't love the price. It's a fantastic matchup. He's going to eat in this one. Uh, but I think, you know, when I'm looking at great matchups for big men, when they're when the Pacers are in those spots, it's the same thing for Turner. He's in a great matchup as well, and I'm going to get a drastic discount. So I'm mostly leading McConnell. I'm looking at a little bit of Miles Turner. Uh, and then I wouldn't mind if you wanted to place a bonus, but those are probably the main guys I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking at this pretty much the same guys. You know, Miles Turner definitely is on my list here. Um, I do like Brogdon a little bit. I mean, I I know you're saying his assists go down because McConnell's in the lineup. 
Uh, that's kind of up in the air. I, I think it's better if McConnell sits. Uh, Brogdon's a better play, but uh, and that means McDermott's playing because uh, I mean, Brogdon does get those those assists. But uh, seventy seven hundred, I think that's a great price tag. I think you know he's going to hit more value towards that mid eight k range he's been at most of the season. Uh, you know, just against against the Minnesota Timberwolves team that just plays with a lot of pace. So uh, the pace up uh, game makes me want to have Brogdon. Uh, like you said, Sabonis is a little pricey. Don't hate the don't hate the play, but I'm not personally going to go there. The other guy that I'd add is uh, that you didn't touch on is just a fantastic GPP play is Aaron Holiday. Uh, he was getting 18 to 20 minutes per game, and he can definitely do damage in that amount of time as long as he gets those shots uh, against uh, again a paced up a paced up team and uh, you know a team that doesn't doesn't play a lot of defense. Uh, 3200 for Aaron Holiday seems like it could be a smash play for a GPP. All righty, so let's slide over to the Minnesota side of the ball then because. Uh, no, no D'Angelo Russell for, it looks like the next four to, I believe it was four to six weeks after getting a little procedure done on his knee, on his leg, uh, dealing with soreness for at least the past two to three weeks now. So there's going to be no Russell. looks like Ricky Rubio will be the starting point guard going forward for the foreseeable future. This is a back-to-back for Minnesota, second half of back-to-back. So, uh, it's worth monitoring Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think he's necessarily going to sit, but he's. For everything we just said about Tatum, um, Towns has mentioned the same thing. Conditioning was the one thing that was holding him back immediately. Uh, and he's, you know, he's been playing almost starters level minutes, but uh, still a hair or a tick down from what Cat's norm is. Cat's normally like known as the Iron Man. He's playing about thirty-five to thirty-seven minutes. He's hovering right around the low thirties uh, since he's returned. So keep your eye on that. But nonetheless, we have a lot of things to like over here. Uh, I don't love Ricky Rubio's price tag at sixty-one. I, I think I'd honestly just rather play McConnell on the other side of the ball. Uh, for five hundred dollars cheaper if he starts, uh, but Anthony Edwards six K, uh, Malik Beasley at seventy one. Both these guys should continue taking a boatload of shots, especially with D'Angelo Russell out. Uh, I prefer Beasley. Beasley's trying to step up. He really wants to be one of the guys for this team. He's been leading the team in usage this whole season with Cat out, uh, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon, especially given the new news. So Beasley will be one of my favorite options. And then this front court, uh, they started Vanderbilt the past two games. Uh, it's worth keeping an eye on between uh, Vanderbilt. And um, McDaniels, both these guys are excellent young players. Both of them have great defensive ability. They both complement Carl Anthony Towns very, very well, because we know Cat is not very good on defense. Um, but McDaniels has also been leading the team in corner three-point shots this season. Uh, and I expect going forward, as they kind of you know sat here and messed around with that power forward spot, they're going to look to find some security now that Carl Anthony Towns is there. So. Uh, might be Vanderbilt again, but I, I just wanted to bring up McDaniels because I think it's something worth at least keeping an eye on. But why don't you talk about this Minnesota team? Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't mind going to Towns. I think it's it's a great uh, GPP option. I think, you know, like you said, he hasn't really hit a stride yet um, because of that conditioning issue. And uh, it feels like he's got to hit it at some point soon. I mean, he's been playing a few games now. Um, maybe not quite yet, but 9,300. I mean, you, you can take a shot at that in GPP. Um, the one, the one guy you didn't touch on that I do have here is, uh, Jordan McLaughlin. And, and like you said, it is a back to back for these guys. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much Rubio is going to play tonight or was going to play tomorrow. When I last look at the box score, McLaughlin had thir- 13 minutes in the first half. So he was on pace to play about 20, 25, 26 minutes. And if he's getting that at 3,600, I, I like that as a value play. Um, you know, I, I think with D'Lo out, he's going to really be an integral part of the uh, of the rotation going forward. Absolutely, it's uh, it's actually a good call considering we're going to have a pretty chalky point guard in the next slate. We'll get the same news or in the next game uh, that you could pivot off of him with. So, and we will lead right into that segue. Boom, Denver traveling <laughs> to Washington, <laughs> taking on the Wizards. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time game in this one. No injury report. For the Nuggets, as we know, they played today. A fantastic game from the Joker. Terrible game from the chalk to Michael Green and Michael Porter Jr. For the Wizards, Thomas Bryant, Ish Smith, only players on the injury report. Everybody else should be good to go. Uh, No game total, no spread. Uh, We'll talk about this Denver team. They're missing a lot of bodies. Uh, In today's game, Gary Harris, Monte Morris Jr., Will Barton, Paul Millsap, and P.J. Dozier were all ruled out. With that, we saw... Uh, Excuse me. I need to get a drink. Uh, We saw Compasso draw the start. Uh, and he did not disappoint. Near minimum play for DK. Put up about 37 DK points. Uh, he's going to be the chalk. Everybody's going to write back there. And I would not fault them one bit if he draws another start and sees minutes like he did. So, uh, Compazzo has to be a great play. Jokic, not going to take anything away. 11K, he's the joker. He's the probably an MVP candidate if the Nuggets weren't so bad this season. Uh, he'd probably be leading that race right now. But nonetheless, I can't rule him out. And I look for a Michael Porter Jr. bounce back game. 
Uh, anytime he, I see somebody just get that bad taste in their mouth from a guy with his kind of talent, um, I'm willing to take the chance on the bounce back. Is it safe in cash? No, we just saw his floor. Uh, it's absolutely low. It can burn you. Uh, but I definitely think he's got some tournament and GPP uh, upside. So Michael Porter Jr., Compazzo, if you want to go back to green as well, it's definitely an option. Those are my three major options, and I'll never fault you for Jokic. Yes, Facundo. If you were in our uh, Discord conversation earlier, I was uh, talking this guy up right when uh, Monte Morris got ruled out, and it turned out to be a, a great call. He had uh, eight assists and uh, 15 rebounds, I think it was, or sorry, 15 points. I mean, I think it was. So, uh, you know, he really, he really crushed it. 3,500, definitely, definitely in play. Definitely a guy I'm going to be locking in all my lineups, um, unless, uh, unless I know Monte Morris is coming back, I might second guess it. Um, but I'm probably still going to play him, even if, even if Morris does play. To be honest, um, Jokic, yeah, I think he's just, a, just too good of a matchup to pass up. But you know, hopefully, it's, it doesn't end up as a blowout. I don't think it will. Uh, 11K, I'll, I'll pay that for Jokic against the uh, Washington Wizards with no, no real center. I mean, they're still searching. They play Mo Wagner, and uh, who knows who they play <laughs> against the Joker? They might play all of them. It might just be a team effort to, to try to stop this guy because he's really balling out. Uh, and then the other guy that uh, you didn't mention was as Jamal Murray. I think he, he's had three good games in a row now. And the question is, is he healthy now? You know, he had those. Uh, he was talking about how he's banged up. Had a, uh, I think it was a bad elbow, bad knee, blah 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 blah. All these different things that were issues uh, on his body, and and maybe he's healthy now. Seventy one hundred is a, a nice price tag, and he's he's just been playing well recently. So I don't mind going there for uh, for cash and and even for GPPs also. Awesome. Yeah, and I listen now. The uh, the Wizards found their center, man. Two games in a row with the W. Mo Wagner mm-hmm. there. Uh, yeah, he will get chewed, though. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's going to gonna need to be a team effort. So we'll slide over to the Wizards side of the ball. And I'll keep it simple for me. I don't have interest in anybody here. I'll take a hard pass on every single person. I that's can't it. blame you for that one. <laughs> that's a, that's a <laughs> solid logic. The Wizards suck. I think that's uh, that's what I have here as a placeholder in my uh, my little blur yep. for the Wizards. Check, so. Checks notes. Wizards suck. Keep moving. Yeah, the Wizards and are next terrible. Game. Next game. <laughs> yeah. It's that simple. You know what? We got ten. We got ten games. Twenty teams to talk about. We don't need to have exposure to every single one of them. We won't. Uh, plain and simple. Uh, end of the day, when you're making your lineups, you will not have exposure to every single team in every single game. You know, we've talked awesome. a lot about conditioning, though. I do have interest in one guy if we're, uh, to back up a little bit here. Um, Davis Bertans, uh, 4,800. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, you know, his conditioning is finally getting there. He's, he went five for six from distance last game. Uh, before that, he's been shooting like, you know, two for six, two for five, things like that. So um, that's his main his main thing is just is hitting those trays off of uh, Westbrook and, and, and Bradley Beal getting to the hoop. So if he's actually got his conditioning going there, I don't mind going to that uh, 4,800. Um, and I, I, I really don't know. Uh, you know how the how the uh, Nuggets are gonna defend that, so uh, I don't mind going there. All right. Next game, Detroit Pistons traveling to Chicago take on the Bulls in this one. Uh, and this was a game that was not supposed to happen. But as far <laughs> as the injury report for for the Bulls, uh, Devin Dotson, Chandler Hutchinson, Laurie Mark, and Otto Porter Jr. all ruled out. Pistons have yet to release their injury report. Um, doesn't make sense as why they haven't. But uh, we know that Blake Griffin is not playing. Uh, they are going to sit him until he's traded. In his absence, we should see a fair amount of Sadiq Bay. He's priced up already, so I expect him to still draw a fair amount of ownership. Uh, but I'll lead it off here. I'm looking at the front court. Jeremy Grant, uh, 7,600, just a guy that you can just play every single night and feel confident in him. Past three games have been a little rough, uh, but in those games, I think one of those was a Mason Plumley triple double. That's not going to happen every game. Uh, one of them was a Sadiq Bay 30 point actual game. That's not going to happen every game. A lot of things, a lot of people have just been stepping up over the past few games. But if we remember correctly, when the team needs a bucket the most, it's been Jeremy Grant. You can get it done on the defensive end. Wendell Carter Jr. is back. But other than that, this front court has been pretty, uh, pretty lackluster and pretty injured all season long. And I wouldn't expect a full complement of minutes um, from Wendell Carter Jr. And it's also worth noting uh, he's, he's pretty much shooting like an average of about like 26, 27 percent over the last three games. Eventually, that ship's going to write. Law of averages, we're probably looking at a good game and a great matchup for Grant. Uh, so I really like him. And then if you want to look at a guy like DeLon Wright, um, wouldn't mind him either at 6K. I love targeting the backcourt. Uh, Kobe White, Zach Levine have struggled on defense all season long. Pretty much anybody that walks into town just gets a bucket. Um, I mean, I probably can go in there and drop a solid 25 DK points for you guys. <laughs> I, I, I might be min sal too, so keep that in mind if you need a nice little return. Uh, if you're struggling, I'm, I'm down there. If you just got to look all the way down to the bottom of the player pool, you'll see me. 
Uh, that, that's now. <laughs> yeah, you really dubs, you'd really dubs it exactly. Uh, that and I wouldn't mind taking the shot at Sadiq Bay. I just think that you know this kid he's he's been shooting like something absurd, like seventy percent from deep uh, this season. That's unsustainable. That's not going to happen. He's been shooting the, the lights out of the ball, but uh, I couldn't remember the exact stat. It was weeks ago, but he was shooting something like eight percent on two point shots and like seventy percent three point shots. That was a couple weeks ago, so I'm sure that's changed. Uh, but nonetheless, fifty five hundred for a guy that we'd expect, you know at least double digit shot attempts, probably somewhere in the middle of the teens going forward. Uh, I'll have some, op- uh, some, some uh, shares of him uh, in this matchup. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like Sadiq Bay 5,500. I, I definitely like that play, you know, 38 minutes in their last game. And yeah, he's just, he's just going to be a, a big part of what they do going forward. Now that they're, uh, they got rid of Rose. Um, they're sitting uh, Blake Griffin. I mean, um, they're going to play the young guys. I can't wait for Seiko Naboya to come back and, and have his his moment too, because uh, I've got him rostered in a few leagues, a few deeper leagues, uh, obviously. But um, you know, can't wait for that to happen. But yeah, Delon Wright, I think he's probably the strongest play here. Um, just perpetually overlooked, and he's just been crushing it. And he does get a very weak backcourt, unfortunately, in my bullies that are uh, that just can't they can't guard anything in the backcourt. They let they let all the guards in the league just score whatever whatever they want on them. So uh, I, I love going to Delon Wright at uh, six thousand. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think um, for Jeremy Grant. Uh, you know, I, I disagree a little bit there. I think, you know, I think I can't really fault you for playing the guy. He is the go-to guy there. And, you know, I think he does probably have a better game than he's been having, but, um, I, you know, I think the bulls can, can throw Thaddeus Young on them. They can throw Garrett Temple on them. They have a, they have a lot of different bodies. And I think that's what they're going towards is, is a lot of this, uh, you know, ability to switch and, and, and bigger, longer lanky guys, Patrick Williams, um, you know, guys like that. So, uh, I, I think he has a little bit rougher time of it than you think, but that's just me. Maybe I'm just a bulls fan. <laughs> <laughs> no man you might be right uh I, I i think he's just one of those rock solid guys that's great for cash we know we're getting night in and night out the shot attempts will always be there good rebounding upside great defensive stat upside and if the shot falls if he's shooting anywhere between you know 45 to 60 percent from the floor you're probably looking at like a 45 dk point return and if he struggles you're looking at more like 30 so he's not going to crush or sink it necessarily either mm-hmm. um on the chicago side i'll let you take this they're your bowls um uh, <laughs> Could we play any of these guys? I mean, I can't say it like that. I I, I have a lot of interest <laughs> in a couple of them, but uh, who are you looking at the most? Well, first of all, everyone vote for Zach Levine for the All-Star game. This, this kid deserves it, man. He's just killing it. I don't know if anyone saw that last game, but he just, uh, you know, ice in his veins, nailed a, nailed a game-winning shot. Of course, he missed a free throw uh, to win it, but uh, they, they won it over. And I want to talk about that, too. I don't mean to interrupt you because that all just right. shows you how many, how many how much like leaps and bounds this kid has taken because it was only, like, what, less than a week ago that he missed that that game winning layup at the buzzer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one where he was arguing, you know, he thought he drew the contact and all that. But uh to be able to bounce back and hit a game winning shot after only a week ago where, you know, you were put in that exact situation. A lot of guys in the league might be nervous, might, you know, f- might scoff the chance, might say, you know, uh, draw it up for somebody else. I I missed my chance. But uh, he embraces it. And you know, this kid he, I, I was talking about the other day, there's only been two players I've seen take as big as steps uh, since they've been in the league as Zach Levine, the other one being Lonzo Ball. And it's just the way that these guys have been able to Im- improve their jump shots. Neither one of them had a jump shot coming into the league, both broken. Zach Levine, a guy that they only said had the athleticism, wasn't a playmaking guard, kind of a tweener. Uh, shut everybody up now. He's definitely an all-star. Yeah, Levine's Levine's jump shot is wet now, man. It is just it's gorgeous to watch. I love. I was one of his biggest critics last season. I loved to watch him play, but I'm not going to try try not to hijack the uh, the podcast here. But uh, no, the, yeah. my my targets for for these guys for DFS. I'm not actually going to Zach Levine, uh, just because of the price and the salary. Uh, not my favorite target here. I actually do like that young. Uh, 6100. I think he's you know finally at a price point that makes sense. It's more of a cash play. It's more of a hey filler if you can fit this guy into your lineup. He's probably going to hit value there at 6100. He's just integral to what the Bulls do, and um, you know I think that's probably maybe the lowest price point he's been at in a few weeks here, so uh, or at least a week. So uh, I don't mind going there. Wendell Carter, I'll go to him at 5500. You know more for GPPs, um, and there's probably better options, but you know you have to figure he gets more than his 21 minutes he got last game, and he played really well in his last game in the in the limited minutes he played. So if he plays 28 minutes or so, he's going to beat that 5,500 price tag, I believe. Uh, the last guy I got over here uh, for DFS is Garrett Temple, 4,400. He's just a steady cash option. His last three games, 36 minutes, 30 minutes, 39 minutes in those games. So he's going to play a lot. Um, he's probably going to guard Jeremy Grant quite a bit. Uh, and he's going to nail some threes. So he's been he's been playing really well. So I think the main guy I have interest on the Bulls is Tomas Sadoransky. 
Uh, nice little stable cash slash GPP at 4,500. He's been pretty much returning a solid little floor for us as of late. Um, the Bulls are kind of seeing. You you watch these games, Keith. They need a traditional point guard. Uh, mm-hmm. They need someone to facilitate, to create. Uh, Kobe White has not been that guy. They're already kind of exploring options on the trade market, rumors with Lonzo Ball. Uh, mm-hmm. They'd rather have Kobe White be the sixth man. So, you know, if, if it comes down to it, he's going to have a short leash, in my opinion, going forward. Uh, he's still going to be the starter. Uh, but he's going to have a short leash. You know, the turnovers, if if he's, you know, he can't create his own shot, if he's struggling from the field, hey, give him any reason and they'll give him the hook. And Sadoransky might end up closing a little bit more games too. He's better defensively as well. So 4,500, I have some interest in him. Uh, definitely, probably, I wouldn't say definitely a GPP, but uh, probably more of a GPP option. Uh, but he does have some cash appeal in there. And then you made some other good calls. I don't I don't mind looking at guys like Temple. I probably won't be going to Wendell Carter Jr. at that price tag. I just want to know that he can play... 28 to 30, maybe we get that news. If we get that news, I'll change my tune. Uh, and the same thing, Thad Young, you said it. He's priced appropriately if you landed on him and he, he rounded out your roster. I don't mind that, sure. Uh, he's safe, but he's not a guy that I'm necessarily going out of my way to play either. All right. We have four games left. A little more than halfway through. Probably a good time to pause, take a break, and let you guys know to go check out Manscaped. If you haven't already, guys, go visit manscaped.com, whether it's for you, whether it's for a significant other, or maybe it's a gift for a friend, uh, they have the perfect package for you, no pun intended. Uh, And that's exactly what it is, is the perfect package kit. It comes with the lawnmower 3.0, it comes with the toner, it comes with the body wash, it comes with the aftershave, it comes with a little bit of everything, a little carry kit, a nice travel compression short boxers which are become my new favorite pair of boxers, may I say, I like the compression shorts. Uh, But nonetheless... Great products, and my favorite thing to mention is that it, it's a travel kit. Uh, that's exactly what I love to use this for. Uh, I use it at home as, as well, but everything is sleek. It's portable. It's fast charging. It's waterproof. Fantastic product, guys. And if you check out them and use that promo code HOOPBALL20, you get 20% off plus free shipping off of your entire purchase. Uh, you know, it, it just makes gift giving a little easier when you just, you know, get three or four of these things. Get 20% off all of them. Save a ton of money for yourself. Get everybody the coolest gifts. And everybody wins. Portland versus New Orleans. Traveling to the Bayou. Take on the Pelicans in this one. Uh, as far as an injury report goes, we do not have one. Not yet submitted. Sorry, guys. Pelicans played today. So did the Blazers. Guess what that means? Nah, I'm just kidding. It's the only game that we do have it for. Boom, boom. If you said that I uh, that the Portland-New Orleans game was the game that had the game total and the spread already out, you were the winner. Uh, that was the secret sauce in there. The one game where both teams are on a back-to-back. Makes no sense. Absolutely no sense, but we got it. Uh, 231 and a half game total. Pelicans favored by three in this one. So I'll pass it over to you. Uh, Keith, talk about this Portland team on the second half of a back-to-back. Yeah, I mean, Portland, Do anytime you talk about Portland, you have to start and end with Damian Lillard. I mean, this guy's just ugh, cruising, man. He hasn't had a bad game, and I don't even know this season. Uh, it's been a long time, but uh, since uh, C.J. McCollum went down, he's been sporting a 34.6% usage rate, and he's had several games where he's top 40% in that usage rate. I mean, he's just he's the guy that, that runs the engine over there at Portland. So if Embiid plays, he's my favorite, you know, high high price target, uh, expensive tier target. But if Lillard, uh, if he doesn't play, Lillard is is my favorite guy. He's just a safe guy. Um, he's gonna he's gonna hit that that value at ten three. Um, the other guys I'd be looking at at Portland would be Robert Covington, fifty eight hundred. Yeah, I just don't see Zion Williamson or Stephen Adams really, you know, playing that perimeter defense that's gonna requ- be required to to stop him from hitting threes and draining threes. And you know, last I looked tonight, he had six blocks. Um, and he's going to be playing defense on these guys and Williamson, Steven Adams. So, uh, you know, he might get three, four, five, six blocks again. Um, and then the other guy I'd be looking at would be Gary, Gary Trent Jr. And, uh, you know, people overlook this guy sometimes. He's, he's at 5,800, which is a pretty fair fi- price tag. It's not, not exactly too cheap, uh, but it's worth it because he's just an integral part of their offense now that C. Jim Collins is not there. So he needs his, his shot to fall to really hit the value. But um, I think 5,800 is a fair price for him. Six block shots. I'm glad you said that because I have them uh, in a lot of fantasy leagues and I need blocks this week pretty bad. So uh, that was cool to just load up and look at. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think I, I think you hit the nail on the head with Covington. Uh, I, I have him circled, starred. He's probably the main guy I'm looking at this. Uh, they're going to need him on both ends of the court in this one. Uh, you know, Zion being the size he is, Covington, he's got a little bulk to him as well. He's got the quick feet. He is one of the best perimeter uh I guess probably one of the better overall defenders uh, in the NBA right now. So I definitely have some interest in Covington. 
Outside of him, I'm going to be looking at some of these ancillary guards. I don't mind the Gary Trent Jr. call. I actually do like that at 5,800. Don't think I end up pulling the trigger, uh, but I do like it nonetheless. Uh, Anthony Simons, 4,100. I think he's a solid value option. Uh, just another guy. He's been chipping in off the bench, playing a good good chunk of minutes, right around that 24 to 28-minute mark on most nights. Uh, 4,100, I'm okay with that. Same thing with Derek Jones Jr. I'd probably prefer Simons over Derek Jones Jr. Nonetheless, a guy that's 4K, multiple uh, position eligibility at both forward positions, should be looking at it starting and, you know, solid 25 to 32 minutes. Not the greatest play, uh, but he's there if you need him. And that's probably it. Keep in mind, Harry Giles has no timetable. I forgot to mention that. He's out for a while. Uh, so they are going to be pretty thin at uh, the center position. So we probably will continue to see Canner playing heavy, heavy minutes. Um, and I would expect some sort of signing to happen relatively soon. On the New Orleans side, though, let's talk about that because Steven Adams left the game tonight, uh, lower back tightness or soreness. So he did not return or is questionable to return, I think, at the at this very moment. So keep an eye on that. He, he's probably going to enter the, the day questionable tomorrow. If he sits, we'll probably see Hernan Gomez uh, get a significant increase in his role. He's probably going to be one of my favorite options and favorite value plays. Looking at him at $3,800 on this slate. We'll probably see Jackson Hayes draw the start. We hope he does. Because uh, he'll just find himself in, in foul trouble pretty quickly. Hayes gets in there. And Hernan Gomez, will, whether he starts or come off the bench, he'll be looking at 24 minutes or so. And he's just a double-double machine and a great point-per-minute guy in those minutes. Uh, Stan Van Gundy pulled a fast one on us. He told us that he was most likely going to make a change to the starting rotation, <laughs> um, that he was focusing on defense. He wanted to do – there were, he, his exact words, he didn't think that there was any direct um, move that could impact his defense drastically. But he wanted to make a change. Uh, the signs in the wall were pointing towards Bledsoe. Uh, whether it's Josh Hart or Nikhil Alexander-Walker, one of those guys might eventually end up in the starting lineup. Santino said Hart. I'm hoping it's Walker, but he's probably more right than me on this one. Um, I, I, I kind of just wish it's Walker. Uh, that's what it is. He's got the length. I think he could really offer some good um, some good things for him defensively. Uh, so keep your eye on it. There's a lot to monitor. Nonetheless, let's talk about this team. Brandon Ingram at 8400 uh, it's an expensive price tag for Brandon Ingram. He's been a little bit calmer um, this season, but he's really picked things up over the past two games, taking 19 and 23 shot attempts. The usage looks like it is back to where it should be, back into the norm. Uh, he was having a few games where he's taken in the middle of the team shot. Brandon Ingram should never have less than 20 shot attempts on this team. Bottom line, uh, 8,400. I probably don't end up there, though. Uh, that's just the way it's going to go for me. I will play some Lonzo, and I will play some Zion, along with some Hernan Gomez. Those are the three guys I'm really looking at. Yeah, I, I love the Zion call, and I like the other on Gomez call too. That's that's great. I, I don't have him on here personally, but um, that is a great call and, and some, something to really think about. But uh, Zion Williamson's definitely on my list. He uh, he wants to be down low. It's gonna be interesting, you know. As much as uh, Covington wants to play on the perimeter, Zion's just gonna eat down low. And I, I can't remember how many points he had last I looked, but he was just destroying people inside, and and that's what he does. So uh, don't really see that changing against the Pelicans. I don't really. Or I'm sorry, against the. Showblazers. Uh, I don't really see Enos Cantor uh, putting up too much of a, of a resistance to Zion Williamson. So 8,200, I'll go there. Uh, Lonzo Ball is a guy that uh, is going to be overlooked. He he had one not so great game, and so people should be off him. But I think he gets a great matchup here against you know a pretty weak backcourt defense uh, in the in the Trailblazers. So I don't mind going to Lonzo Ball 6,500. Uh, and the change in the lineup, yeah, I think I think if it's Hart, uh, it doesn't really change much. If it is uh, Neil, Nikhil Alexander Walker, then that does change quite a bit because Nikhil Alexander Walker hasn't been playing a lot. Uh, but if he ends up being in the starting lineup, then he's going to get minutes, and and I might look there. But um, the one guy that I think is safe in the backcourt is Kira Lewis Jr. at 3,300, and he seems to be getting those NAW minutes right now. Um, you know, and and I, he's just a really cheap price tag. I think he's getting plenty of minutes for for that uh, for that cheap price. That could stud. Uh, I love his game. Uh, I love everything about him. That's the change that they want to make it, but they can't make it until Alonzo's gone. Uh, mm-hmm. Only issue with uh, Kara Lewis Jr., he's a little undersized. He's young. Uh, he doesn't have the mass and, and the size that a lot of these guys in the league, so we kind of seen it the other night. People try to bully ball him. Uh, leading me kind of, uh, I think I tweeted something out again, why I think, you know, Nikhil Alexander-Walker or, uh, as Santino said, Josh Hart would be the move into the starting lineup just because I don't know how that really would improve their defense. But... <laughs> Uh, with you, a lot of good calls. I think there's a lot of good plays on this uh, in this game. I think this is probably going to be one of the more highly owned games next to uh, the game we're about to get to. Uh, another 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. OKC traveling to Memphis to take on the Grizzlies in this one. Uh, we have OKC on the second half of a back-to-back. So we're going to have to monitor some news as far as whether or not Al Horford plays. Uh, we also know that Shea Gilgis has been out for quite some time. So 
we're definitely going to have to monitor some things over here. Theo Maladon, um, he returned to this game. He was a, a late addition to the roster. He was been dealing with the COVID symptoms and protocols. So he's back with the team. He's back playing. Uh, nonetheless, let's talk about this OKC team. I mean, it's quite simple. If Al Horford's not ruled out and we can expect the full workload for him, I'll have a ton of interest in him. Uh, at 7K, there's no reason not to. I'm probably not going to be playing too much Diallo. I think Baisley's a fantastic option at 62 in GPPs, a little bit more risky in cash. I think, uh, especially if there's no Horford, the rebounding upside and the, the shot attempts will all be there for Baisley just to grab a hold of. And then, um, yeah, I don't mind looking at a guy like Kenrich, who's just been playing fantastic. Uh, you know, I can play multiple positions for them, the two through the th- uh, the four. So can kind of slot in anywhere for any one of these guys. If anybody sits, he's going to see extra minutes. So I'm cool with those three guys. I probably won't go to uh, Maladon in this one just because, uh, you know, again, another guy that was dealing with some COVID symptoms, and it's the second half of a back-to-back. It's the second game back since he's missed about two weeks. Um, they started them. They threw him right to the Wolves, but they might take it easy on him in this game. So wouldn't fault you for it, but a guy that I probably won't land on. Anybody on OKC that you can see yourself playing? No. <laughs> no, I, I – uh, you know – I read somewhere that, um, uh, and it was, it was speculation, but they, you know, they think SGA is probably uh, more closer to probable for this Ooh. game. He's been getting ramped up and, and getting closer to returning. So if he comes back, I just think all these guys are priced up to the point where you know they're, they're priced to the point where they, they get the usage without SGA in. So if SGA does come in, I really just don't have any 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 interest in these guys. I don't mind if you land on Justin Jackson or Theo Maladon. Um, you know, like you said, I I think that's fine. I think those are fine plays. Kenrich Williams. All fine plays, but uh, personally, I have no interest in those guys. So we can just move on. All right. Memphis side of the ball, looking at them traveling or uh, going against this OKC team. Um, OKC is not, you know, not the best defensive team, not the best offensive team, but they hang in every single game, no matter who they face. So uh, you're never expecting a blowout against OKC is what I'm getting at. So uh, John Morant, 7,400. That's a fantastic price tag. I'll have some shares of him in this matchup, especially if there's no SGA. Uh, I really like Morant. In this matchup, Jonas Valanciunas, again, another guy, especially if there's no Horford, 7,300. These two guys just feel like rock solid uh, cash game plays. They both have some tournament appeal as well because we know the upside in both of them. Uh, outside of those two guys, the only other person I'm really good, probably going to be looking at, uh, he's starting to get priced up a little bit, is Grayson Allen. He's just been playing very well. His three ball has been just falling. Uh, he's going to be a big part of this offense as long as these uh, perimeter guys are out, including Desmond Bain. So, I'll take some shots of those three guys, but at the end of the day, it's probably just going to be more of uh, Morant and Joe Val for me. Yeah, I think you have to look at Jonas Valanciunas at that 7,800 price tag. I think you're right. I mean, just it's, it's kind of a jaw-dropping uh, price for a guy that's just so steady. Uh, assuming he's not suspended. I don't know if you saw the uh, the little video of him throwing, uh, I can't he remember actually, his name, one yeah. of the players. Yeah, he, the um, he broke his wrist. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Metu, um, yeah. he, he, he actually ended up having a wrist fracture. And they said they think it's from that. Yeah, it, it was bad. I don't I don't know if you you saw it, but uh, go check it out on, on Twitter or what have you if you do get a chance to. It's 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 bad. It, Jonas obviously was a little ticked off that he got he got dunked on, and uh, you know he he reacted in, in, in a way that uh, wasn't necessarily the best. And and uh, you know hope, hopefully that guy's okay. But uh, anyways, as long as he's playing seventy three hundred, I like I like uh, Jonas in this in this matchup. Uh, Kyle Anderson slow mo. He's on a roll again, 6,400. He's just been having really, really solid games. So I don't mind if you end up there. Uh, again, not a guy I'm reaching for, but if you end up there uh, as some filler for your rosters, it's an okay guy for a cash game. Uh, Dylan Brooks, 5,600. He's a chucker, and somehow he got up 20 shots two games ago. If those shots are, are hitting, um, he can surpass that that uh, price tag. So he's a good GPP option, I think, but uh, I probably would stay, stay clear of him from, uh, in, our, in our cash games. So those are the guys right. I'm looking at. Two games left. Miami Heat traveling to Golden State to take on the Warriors in this one. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. As far as the injury report goes, Golden State, Marquise, Chris, Kevon Looney, Nico Manian, Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, James Wiseman, all ruled out. For the Heat, Avery Bradley, Goran Dragic, Myers Leonard, Chris Silva, all ruled out while Gabe Vincent is probable. No game total, no spread. Uh, I'll lead off with Miami here. Uh, this is an absolute fantastic matchup. Jimmy Butler finally getting the price tag that he deserves at 8,800. Uh, he's the guy that's causing me some pause because I don't mind the price tag. I love the matchup. I love Jimmy Butler. The dude's been close to a walking triple double on most nights. So it's just Wiggins, man. He's been balling. He's been playing some fantastic defense. He shut down some of the best scores that on the wing that have come in there. So I, I definitely have some pause on that price tag. So I don't think I'll end up on Butler. But I, again, I wouldn't fall to. Uh, I'll be looking at some of these guards. Tyler Hero, Kendrick Nunn, 6K, 5,300. Those are going to be the two favorite options on this team. I think that's going to be an up-paced matchup. 
uh, both these guys should probably be looking at floors of about 30 DK points, in my opinion. So uh, I like both of them. Yeah, with Dragic out, you have to look that way. I like none um, more so, 5,300. Just the, I think he's got a lower price tag, and that's the only reason why. Um, you know, it's hard to trust sometimes because Spolstra sometimes just sits the guy for no reason. It's like, why why don't you play this guy? He's he's pretty decent, but, uh, you know, he, he, he has his reasons, and uh, hopefully that doesn't happen here and, and bite me in the butt. But uh, fi- none at 5,300 is pretty good. I love uh, Bam Adebayo, actually, at 8,600, and I just think that the Warriors can be ta- attacked inside pretty easily. And, uh, you know, who's, go- who's really going to stop that big? guy who's going to out rebound him um you know draymond green's probably going to play some center here um i don't know i i like bam it's it's a big price tag but i don't mind paying for it uh especially in cash games i don't know if there's a huge potential there but uh but yeah and then butler i have some interest in butler um like you said uh, wiggins might shut him down 800 seems like a fair price point it's not something i reach for it just seems like a fair fair price and we gotta imagine i wonder if there's uh any like animosity between between the whole Butler and Wiggins. Cause I believe they had that one season together while they were both in Minnesota, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And, and Butler, uh, I believe he used to give some, some talks in the media about how he used to dog it in practice and stuff like that. And how these kids just don't hustle and they don't play. And he was part of that team that when Jimmy Butler took the backups and toasted them. Uh, yeah. So who knows? Maybe, maybe there's a little, uh, you know, I want to clamp this guy to shut him up kind of thing. But if, uh, if there he, ever was a guy that, that bought into that narrative, it would be Jimmy it, Butler. So. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll slide over to the uh, Golden State side of the ball. Uh, and for me, you know, Steph Curry, Ted five, it's Steph Curry. And same thing with Joe. It's listen, these guys, they're not necessarily the premium matchups that we'd love to target them on. Uh, but they're always GPP options. I think, you know, when it comes to cash, we we talked about a few of these other guys. I'd probably prefer Jokic over him in cash, but uh, he's definitely an option for tournaments for me. Steph Curry at 10-5. Uh, Draymond, 6-8. I hate the matchup. I, I do not like him going against Bam, but Draymond looks like old Draymond. So it's that simple. If this dude's going to go out here and be dropping double-digit assists, getting the defensive stats, that's the big thing with Draymond. Early on in the season, we weren't getting the blocks, we weren't getting the steals, and we weren't getting the minutes. Now we're getting all of them. Uh, so at 6,800, he's definitely a play for me. I won't be playing Ubre. Uh, I don't think I'll be playing Wiggins. And that is it. I don't think I'll even be playing Toscano Anderson. Uh, and I'm a big JTA guy. I think it's probably just going to be Draymond, and I'll, I'll have a little, I'll have minimal shares. I won't go overboard on him. I, I like JTA, actually. Uh, yeah, I just think he's getting plenty of minutes, 4,700. I just think that's probably one of the better price tags for a, a, a mid-tier guy. Uh, that's getting the minutes that he's getting, uh, so I don't mind going there. I, I don't. I'm not huge on him. I'm not a huge JTA guy, um, but you know, I don't mind going there. I think it's a fine play. Um, but uh, yeah, I do. I do have some interest in Draymond Green. Um, not really necessarily that interested in Steph Curry, like you said. I think there's just better options out there. GPP pivot all the way. Uh, go for it, man. Uh, not a problem. But Draymond Green, uh, you know, as long as James, James Wiseman's on the sidelines, I think you have to look at Draymond Green's way. And he's starting to look for his, his shot more now, too, uh, which is uh, all dunks pretty much. But uh, he's looking to score. So it's getting it's leading to some nicer stat lines. So uh, I like him at 6,800. All right. Final game of the night. Utah Jazz traveling to L.A. to take on the Clippers. Again, keep an eye on the news. Nicholas Patoon, Paul George already ruled out while Kawhi Leonard's questionable. Um, I would think he's going to sit when they first announced that he was hurt. They made it seem like he was going to miss some time. Uh, it's been a few games, so maybe he does return. But keep your eye on it. Um, definitely something that would drastically impact this slate and probably not going to have the news either way. For the Jazz, only major injury is Mike Conley, and he's questionable for this one. He's getting close to returning. I'll pass it over to you, Keith. Why don't you talk about the Jazz for us? I like Donovan Mitchell here. Um, I like it a whole lot more if Kawhi Leonard sits out. Um, they don't have Paul George. They don't have Kawhi Leonard. Um, you know, they're not a bad defensive team. They can stick T- Terrence Mann on him or something like that. But um, 8300 for for Donovan Mitchell, again, this feels like a fair price. It's not something that I'm reaching for. It's not like my guy that I'm locking in or targeting. But I don't mind going there. Um, the guy I have a lot, a lot of interest in on in the Jazz is my man Rudy Gobert. Uh, 7300 Uh the Clippers are third to last in rebounds in the league, and they just uh, they don't have a great center. So I love Gobert here, 7,300. I think that if you don't go Jovell, you definitely go Gobert. I, I, I lean towards Gobert a little bit. And if I don't go towards Gobert, I go to, towards Jovell. But, um, yeah, Gobert is probably my, my top my top uh, target here. 
Yeah, I think Joe uh, Gobert is probably the safer cash option. We just know it his floor is pretty much there every time. Joe Val, you know, we've seen his floor today. I think he had like a 10 and 5 game. Uh, that'll burn. You're never going to get a 10 and 5 game out of Gobert. That just won't happen. You might not get the, you know, 34 and 16 game that you could get out of Joe Val. Uh, but the, 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 the stability with Gobert is what we're paying for here. Great matchup. You talked about it. These teams t- uh, played earlier in the year. Uh, game got out of the hand. Gobert only played about 24 minutes, uh, but put up about 28 DK points, a little bit more than a point per minute. If he's looking at, you know, 30, 35 minutes, we're probably looking at, you know, 35 to 40 DK points. So I'm cool with Gobert. Um, Jordan Clarkson, 6,500. Dude's just been a straight stud. As soon as Mike Conley comes back, I'm not touching him uh, just because I want that price tag to dip back down a little bit. He's starting to get a little bit too inflated for me, but uh, if you want to play him, I won't fault you. I just don't see myself having too many shares. Uh, and, and then I wouldn't mind looking at a guy like Bogdanovich, um, 5,600. Just a guy that always falls um, falls between the cracks, uh, under the radar type dude. Nobody ever gets too many shares of him. Uh, but in GPPs, I like to take a shot on him here and there. He has at least 30 DK points in two out of the last four games, touching 37 in one of those. So uh, he's got some pretty solid upside for a guy that never really draws ownership. And I do like this matchup, especially if there is no Kawhi Leonard in it. Moving on. To the Clippers. If Kawhi sits, man, it's just uh, load up uh, on some of these guys that we're going to expect to play in garbage time. Let's be real. The Clippers won that last game, but they're not probably going to beat this Jazz team with as well as they've been playing this season with no Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Uh, I I just can't imagine. So I know a lot of people immediately go to Lou Williams. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to take a pass at 6,900 just because I'd expect uh, most of my ownership to go to the guys like, you know, uh, your Terrence Mann, your Amir Coffees, uh, these guys, these ancillary role pieces that we're seeing play a little bit more. Um, maybe not Amir Coffee because I think he got his most of his run with Patrick Beverly out. Uh, but Terrence Mann is definitely a guy that I can uh, definitely buy in on. Um, maybe even a little uh, Zubak. I expect him to get, you know, his 20 to 24 minutes in this matchup, and he should be looking at close to a double-double. Yeah, I think uh, as far as the Clippers go, it all, it all just comes down to whether or not Kawhi plays. I mean, if Kawhi does play, you know, he's in there without Paul George. He's at a 34.2% usage rate without Paul George in the last four games that he's played um, without without his running mate there. And uh, so you, you go to Kawhi Leonard at 9,900 if, if he does play. But if he doesn't play... Um, yeah, like you said, uh, I mean, I think this is getting out of hand pretty easily. And you look at those guys. I've been on the Terrence Mann train for uh, quite a few games now, and uh, it's it's played off okay. I mean, he played up. He had some pretty good games. Um, the guy I'd really look at though, if, if Kawhi doesn't play, is Marcus Morris Sr. at 5700. Uh, yeah, he's just been tearing it up, man. Without uh, without Kawhi Leonard in there in the last three games, he's really had really good games. So he should have a lot of touches, uh, especially if Kawhi's out in 5700. He's going to demolish a price tag, I think. Um, even if it is a blowout, you know, he still he still gets plenty of shots up in three quarters, I would think. Um, no, absolutely. Great call. I'm there with you on Morris as well. Uh, I think that even if the game gets out of hand, the shot attempts, he's an aggressive player. He's probably one of the more aggressive people that would be in this lineup outside of Lou Williams. I would expect him to probably be uh, second on the team in shot attempts. Uh, even if the game gets out of hand, you should be looking at 28 minutes and close to 15 shots. So don't mind Marcus Morris either at 5,700. So good call. Thank you guys for listening. Appreciate everything. Uh, got off the rails a little bit on the end. That's on me. I apologize. Uh, but Keith, you always come in here, man. You always bring us the best of the knowledge. You always crush it. So if you guys have a quick second, you guys give Keith a follow on Twitter. Keith, let the good people know where they can find you. Yeah, you can find me at Ginsburg Beats. That's G one S B E R G B three A T S. Awesome. And you can find me at Mike Patria, M I K E A P O T R I A. And then you can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It's available everywhere, guys. And if you have a quick second, give us a five-star rate review, subscribe, notifications on, all that good stuff. Uh, means the world to us, guys. We love to see that stuff in there. Uh, all the positive feedback kind of perks our day up a little bit. And when there's the constructive criticism, we only get better. So thank you guys so much. We will be back tomorrow. I'll be on with my good buddy, Santino Cocone. We'll be running through that site. Thank you guys for everybody over here at Hoopball. Let's go take down some tournaments. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.